Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Uh, this uh, question was sent to me by Emma. She wanted to uh, I recognise it as well. I think it's in the book. I think this might be question 7 from the book. But um, tough little question here where they don't really tell you much. They just tell you that basically this is happening. Two walls and it's going ding. Ding. And then one thing we do know. When it hits the second time. P is moving in a direction that is perpendicular to BC. So it's going to go something like this. Ding where that is a right angle. Now I'm going to call this first thing U and then I'm going to call it V1 and V2 just to kind of separate them. And I'm going to start putting my angles in. I'm going to call this original angle. Well, we know that one. It's the same as this one. So that one's theta. And I'm going to call this one phi. And basically what this question is going to be all about is getting rid of this angle phi. Um, now think about it because when we draw this across that's going to be theta up here we're actually going to have theta plus phi yeah it's not a very good phi oh, <laughs> missing it there we go and then over here well as that's 90 and that's theta that's actually going to be 90 minus theta yeah okay I'm now ready to go and do this question yeah and I've and this is going to look quite neat believe me when I first did it um, it didn't take me necessarily that long but um, my working was a little bit all over the place higgledy piggledy now first thing I did though was I wrote down well I know that u cos theta is going to be the same as v1 cos phi yeah and that's because because uh, parallel to the wall which you're impacting upon uh, the speeds don't change so u cos theta equals v1 cos phi and eu sine theta equals v1 sine phi just by definition of what e really is and you're probably more familiar with this uh, formula e tan theta equals tan phi and I thought great but they've no, they don't mention anything about phi in the answer so I need to get rid of that phi well I then repeated the process but my u became v1 and my v became v and my v1 became v2 so this is my initial this is my final and i'm using these angles now remember e is the coefficient restitution of both balls so i had therefore v1 cos theta plus phi equals v2 cos 90 minus theta i subsequently realized cos of 90 minus theta is just sine theta um, and so i wrote it down again v1 cos theta plus phi equals v2 sine theta and then I had v1 sine theta plus phi for very similar reasons is v2 sine 90 minus theta but that of course is v2 cos theta just like the one previous to it so v1 sine of theta plus phi equals v2 cos theta and then I divided them again um, oh sorry I need a knee on that don't I just like I did on the other ones yeah, and so when I divide them, I'm going to get e tan theta plus phi equals, um, now this is going to be cot theta. Yeah, and I thought, great, actually, we're in a really good position now to eliminate the phi. That's what we want to do. We want to get rid of that phi. So I know what tan phi is. It's e tan theta. So if I just look at this one and expand out tan theta plus phi using compound angle formulae for tan so that's going to become tan th oh, sorry it's almost using double angle there tan theta plus tan phi over 1 minus tan theta tan phi equals 1 over tan theta then I can now use this again this formula here getting rid of the tan phi's here and then all I'll have in my equation are tan thetas and e's and that's all they've got in their answer so I know I'm going the right way um, so I'm going to chuck in e tan theta here and here I'm also going to put that e over there just to park it and leave it there for later you know it's just like out of the way <laughs> so I'm going to have tan theta plus e tan theta because tan phi is e tan theta over 1 minus or well, tan theta times that is going to be e tan squared theta I think okay and then I'm just going to times that over there times that over there cross multiply basically and hopefully end up with the answer so I'm doing that times that that times that so that times that is going to give me e tan squared theta plus e squared tan squared theta and that's going to equal 1 minus e tan squared theta
If I now match that up with that, I'm basically really, really close to the answer. Oh, thank you, Bibbly. Uh, sorry, my daughter's just walked in. Uh, so 2e... Oh, hello, Bibsy. Uh, okay, so 2e tan squared theta plus e squared tan squared theta. Hello, sweetie. Okay, so now just factorise it in the answers there, basically, because you're going to get... Um, if you take out an e and a tan squared theta, you're going to get e, e plus 2, tan squared theta equals 1, with a little bit of rearrangement. And that's it. That's basically part A. Um, for part B, um, you've just got to... All I did for part B was I noted that tan theta, so I'm getting a bit distracted by my daughter. Uh, tan theta is 1 over root... Yeah, we'll put some music on in a second, Bibsy. Okay, 1 over root e plus 2. And I'm sort of like, well, to minimise it, if I'm trying to find the smallest possible value of theta for which this could be true, because that's what they're essentially saying. They're saying that the angle between the walls must be at least 30 degrees, yeah? So the angle theta must be at least... Right, now... Um, at least. Um, now, let's reason it like this. Yeah, all right, Bibsy, I'm coming, I'm coming, I promise. I'm almost finished, I'm almost finished. It'll only take me a second. Okay, so the angle theta must be at least... Um, well, if this is... We're looking basically to minimise the left-hand side, aren't we? Because tan is an increasing function, yeah? So we're saying what it is at least. Well, the right-hand side, the minimum... Yeah, at least the value of the minimum of the right-hand side. Yeah, and what is the minimum of the right-hand side? The minimum of the right-hand side is going to occur when uh, the bottom of this is as large as possible. Is as large as possible. And to make that as large as possible, and this is quite subtle, this really, I suppose, we'll need to make E as large as possible. Yeah, but E is always stuck between 0 and and 1 if it's a perfectly elastic collision. So minimum of RHS occurs when E plus 2 is as large as possible, uh, which occurs when, yeah, which occurs when E equals 1. And if E equals 1, what have we got on the bottom there? 1 times 3 square rooted, so we've got tan theta, i.e. tan theta is 1 over root 3, in which case theta is 30 degrees, yeah? If E is any smaller, the right-hand side gets larger, and that's just because you're dividing by a smaller number, you'll actually end up with a larger value. And if this gets larger, then invert, uh, you know, do inverse tan on it, and you'll end up with a larger angle, because tan is an increasing function. Um, so, quite a subtle bit at the end there, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that will be my argument. I hope the examiners would accept it. Okay, hope that was useful. All the best, Emma, and uh, keep up the hard work. Bye-bye.